Uh, Philip is going to give us a great talk now, um, PLC for home automation and how to make it a honeypot. Without further ado, please uh, come in a little silently, turn off your phones and enjoy. Hi. Hi. Works? Okay, thank you. Okay, first of all, I would like to thank b sides for having me here. Oops, it's that going? And uh, I would like to thank my mentor, Scott Irvin from Productivity. They have their booth just outside, so please check it out. And uh, thanks for everyone who's sitting in this room. Okay, so today I'm gonna talk about PLC for home automation and uh, how to make it like a honeypot. Um, it may not be what you have imagined. Uh, it's not about uh, how to crack a PLC, not about how to, uh, how to break it, because you know Trend Micro is not playing red team. So um, it's about having fun. Okay, so this is how, how you might imagine about home automation, a, like an open hub project with Raspberry Pi, some neat modules that you can purchase on seeds or um, other online retail stores. And, and you put something like your mailbox checker, your uh, washing machine, on, or yeah, to monitor the temperature, humidity, in, of your house, but um, just a friend of mine had, had this idea of making it a little bit more robust, um, like using an industrial level PLC, you can have something that works for 20 years, you don't, you don't even have to upgrade the firmware and that's part of the problem. Well, um, so you just install and forget and it will run forever. And they even, Nowadays, they even have some inter uh, user interfaces like IFTTT, a uh, very beautiful HMI. So you don't even need to tweak on a Raspberry Pi. It's the interface is like this. So um, if something, then something. And you, ha you, you still have to understand a little bit how PLC works. For example, you have to configure a timer that sends heartbeat. Uh, otherwise, if someone just DDoS your PLC, um, you're dead. So PLC is just not like a, a modern computer. It's a little bit weak. I mean, the CPU is weak. So uh, if you DDoS it, it stops to work and everything's gone and there's no security anymore. So this is how my friend's house is designed. As you enter a house, there's an IR infrared sensor. As the sensor is activated. Within one minute, you have to push the key, keyless key to um, unarm this uh, rolling code remote controller. Otherwise, uh, there's a siren with a 100 dB would buzz very loud to alert everyone, to scare your shit out, sorry. <laughs> sorry for dirty words. <laughs> okay, and then there, there's a, there's a uh, read switch on the main door, so you cannot just come in and try to unlock, uh, pick lock the, lock pick the door. It doesn't work, it will, um, the siren will buzz. So uh, it's how the buzz looks like. And he's a freak. He, he has designed all this circuit. It's like a model bus TCP GPRS with GPRS module. So if anybody enters his house, there's a SMS sent to his cell phone. And uh, there's an external module that goes, uh, talks RS-485. So he has additional uh, digital ends. And uh, there are backup powers. Uh, it's a double looped uh, powered circuit. So when anything fails on the main circuit, there's a backup power powered by UPS. And this alarm, 16 DIs, that he is just having fun. And he even kind of tweaked a bit and used a heater and a backup alarm. So the thing is, uh, he has to configure a timer to send heartbeat to this backup alarm uh, here. Uh, if there's no heartbeat within three minutes, there's another uh, SMS will be sent to his mobile phone. So he knows something's wrong. And just some peripherals, a uh, patrol helicopter, for example, you know, that's just for fun. So um, here's how things are wired. Um, well, I will leave it to you because you can download all the, uh, the slides and all the programs uh, in this talk on GitHub. Everything's open sourced, so you can check it out on yourself, and you can probably try to implement that with your Raspberry Pi. Uh, that's how I did it here. 
no worries. My pleasure to share everything. Yeah. Okay. So uh, here's how to break into the house. Um, you, yeah, you might try to trigger the IR sensor without key lock. Boom. Uh, you open the door without the key lock. Boom. Um, you cut up AC power and there's uh, UPS and you want to uh, short circuit because it's triggered by it's uh, it's low triggered. So you might want to ground something. Um, maybe. Or you can hack into a VPN, like send him some pornography and get his IP address, hack into his home router. Um, sorry, that's not what I want to talk about today. You can do that, I'm pretty sure. And that's what we do every month. So um, I, yeah, I know you can do that. But mm, the thing is, you should not stop sending the heartbeat. You have to be very careful. Otherwise, he knows it. Yeah. So, um, the only thing that might break this design is a failed uh, power rail on both powers. And it happened once. So that's Murphy's Law. Well, what can be wrong will be wrong. So, um, you cannot just smash and grab because he has his, he's, he's really a paranoid freak. He has his um, wire, wire mesh glass installed. So maybe uh, the rubbers, uh, to want to just go to next door. Um, sorry for his neighbor, but um, yeah, it's how it works. Or you might want to break this uh, rolling code thing uh, with a, that, that, that comes with a really good PRNG. So you might want to follow uh, Sam Kamker's talk in DEF CON 23, that's last year. You just record uh, the, this uh, wireless radio signal and play back. That might work. Um, I haven't tried it. Or you just use acetylene um, heater to break his main door. And yeah, that works very well. So what's next? Now we have an um, armed house. We have a POC that talks Modbus uh, on port uh, 503, sorry, 502, um, like everybody knows. So uh, we can make it a first level honeypot. What's a first level honeypot? It just copies. Uh, the readings out of this PLC and um, use some like um, use a open source library that runs on Raspberry Pi um, to try to expose itself on the internet so that someone might uh, find your PLC through Shodan. Uh, if you went to the the session this afternoon, there's a uh, dorky. Uh, so it's, it scans Shodan for exposed POCs. So maybe the bad guys might be interested by the POC exposed on the internet and you just, but it's a fake one. You just copy the va real time value. So it's updated every minute. You open a door, something changed to one. You close the door, something changed to zero. So it's, it looks like really authentic. So the bad guy might think this is a real thing and he, want to, he might want to change something that you can uh, log. So this is the uh, architecture. So of course, Smith K wants to change some coils or some holding registers and feel happy. And I have even made a um, web interface, a very simple web interface. I cannot call it HMI because it's just Flask. Um, yeah, so he might be caught. Smith K, if everybody knows, that's out of uh, Kafka's novel. Okay, and we can make it the second level honeypot just by adding a little bit of imagination. Uh, it's a self-adaptive honeypot. Um, for example, some, some state changes in this, uh, in this ground truth POC. And you add some delays to procrastinate this change. Or, um, for example, something changes in the holding register, you just um, don't make a copy, a direct top copy. Uh, you put it on some polynomial function to make it match the value slowly to make it look like a real thing. And the good thing is that you can change the parameters and deploy this honeypot worldwide out of the same ground truth. So eventually you can have 10 honeypots, 100 honeypots that act differently. Yep. So, and um, yes. Python is really a simple script language that's really powerful. You can also bind a pseudo pump onto it. 
uh, and this is the architecture, just some fuzzy function. Um, this is how it looks like. Uh, I have a live demo, but unfortunately, I don't have a POC at hand. I, yeah, limited by budget. There's only one POC, and I cannot leave my friend's house unarmed. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so this is a very vague copy. <laughs> uh, I apologize for it. Okay, so um, this C09 is a heartbeat pin. You can see it change every, man, uh, every second. And um, if someone just took some, like, uh, flip the switch, you can see something change here. Yeah. Or you can see that uh, readings of this holding register changes little by little. So that's how it works. Or just wire this uh, DI with some coil and uh, use that coil to enable a pseudo pump or a real pump if you want to make fun of yourself. Yeah. So, things like that. So, um, so, recap of what's in this talk. So, we have a POC securely uh, fastened the a house, uh, sorry, we have a house securely fastened by a POC with a double loop circuit and we can make it a simple level one uh, honeypot and we can make it uh, a little bit complicated second level honeypot, and we can add some uh, simulated pump to the circuit very easily. And you have the code here. Just download it, fork it, have fun, uh, and if you want to send me some PR, I will be very grateful. Yeah, so that's it. You can add me on Twitter, or fork the code, or just write me. I work for Trend Micro, and uh, thanks to Trend Micro for flying me here. And uh, here's some, sorry, I know I should not do live demo because you see, live demo never works. Exception, exception. Yeah. So, um, sorry. Bear me for a second. Yep, you see here, uh, the coil nine is a hard bit pain. It changes every second. And I have made a Raspberry Pi that uh, monitors the heartbeat. If anything's wrong, uh, if there's no heartbeat within three seconds, a simplified version of the original one, um, a red light turns on. So that's just an imitate, a, a very bad imitate of uh, the original thing. And uh, yeah, this is how you do things uh, if you happen to fork it. You see uh, the value stumped, and um, something's listening, and uh, oh, okay. So I know what's going on. Um, it's something mysterious with uh, Raspberry Pi. Just I have config for two more network, and things should be going. Okay, level one, the level two. And uh, HMI, it's not really HMI. It's, I just called it HMI for yeah for nothing. Okay, so this is the underlying one. Oh, sorry, reloading. Yeah. Yeah, you should not do a live demo. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Ready for questions? Yeah. Any okay. questions? Anybody? Uh, to start experimenting with the PLCs, would you recommend any particular families or types or manufacturers or protocols or anything like that? Um, actually, we're using ICP DAS just because it's very cheap. It's like um, $200 or $400 if you buy it at stock price. But I, I, I believe you can find something cheaper on eBay. Um, please don't try those Siemens ones. It's uh, super hardcore, much more expensive, but it works. Thank you. Yes, please. Is there any interactivity uh, back to the attacker, or is it just, you know, data goes in and dies and gets logged? Uh, are they getting any feedback back to, mm -hmm. you know, to think that they're interacting with an actual <laughs> PLC, I guess? Mm, well, you can do that, but uh, 
actually, I haven't done this until one month ago, so there's no field experiments. Sorry for that. Uh, I will try to, and uh, maybe keep you updated on Twitter. Yes, please? Do you have any recordings of sessions of people in the machine, in the honeypot? Um, yes. Let's see if it works. So, um, besides. So, thank you for the question. I almost forgot this thing. Um, so, let's see, swap coil. Okay. You see, someone has set the values. And you can put this log onto uh, Elasticsearch or any, any, um, any database that you want. So record it. Yes? Anybody else? Anybody else have questions? Going once, going twice. All right. Sold. <laughs> Sorry. Sold. Thank you, Philip. <laughs>